let me cut to the chase. VST3 has been confirmed by Reason Studios for Reason 12. Hey folks, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I have exciting news to report. Reason Studios has finally decided to release a roadmap of where they see the Reason 12 development going over the next, let's say, six months. I think this is a fantastic development. This is something I've been calling on since Reason Plus was released. And uh, in this video, I just want to talk a little bit about this roadmap, some of the things they've laid out, and just to give Reason Studios a big clap and say thank you. Uh, I think this is a great development. Before we go further though, I do want to let you know that I've got a, a free Reason 12 Combinator patch. Uh, it's called Hall of Mirrors. It does a bunch of really crazy reverb and delay things to your music. It's awesome. There's a link down below to click it, to download it, to use it to rock. Speaking of rocking, if you want to keep making great music in Reason, be sure to subscribe to this channel and turn the like button up to 11. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this roadmap right here, released by Reason Studios the other day. Um, so we've got a little bit of a pre preface here, which I think really does make a lot of sense. Essentially, what they say is back in the day, they would take a couple years to release a box, and that would be that. They wouldn't be updates. I mean, that's Reason 2.5, but really, there weren't patches you could download or anything. It was Reason 2 was what shipped. Um, and so you didn't want to give a roadmap because your competitors could copy what you're doing. That all makes sense. Uh, now we're in the future though. It's 2021. They have a subscription service, um, and software updates are really easy to push out. Now it does seem appropriate for a roadmap and thankfully they've decided to give us one, which is what we're going to get to in a second, but they really do. And this is what I like here. They're giving us their vi vision for reason, which I think is something that needs to be renewed or needs to be said explicitly. Um, this is a vision that I can really get behind. And it is a lot of things that I love about reason and a lot of things that frustrate me about reason. And it seems like from this vision, they get it too. They say their ver vision for reason is to make it a place where you get lost in the fun of serious music making. Opening Reason should never feel like a chore, but instead a place where you have more fun making music than anywhere else. I said it in my Reason 12 review, if you want to go back and watch that. Um, I still think Reason is one of the most fun and inspiring tools for making music. It struggles when you try and do serious things at scale. The workflow bogs down. Um, and they also say they want to add they want you to have the depth to take your creativity in unique, weird, and exciting directions. Happy accidents are all about what Reason is about. Um, more things to twist, more things to play with, more things to tweak. And that's where their set tagline, Sound Like You, comes from. I think Sound Like You is a great way of dealing with this. I've, I have like that tag. And I've liked it since they rolled it out. They then go on to say they don't see it as a DAW or a plugin. It's both. Uh, most features excite us, but they don't always benefit everybody. True. Uh, but they've definitely been throwing a lot of bones to the plug-in crowd lately, and much less towards the serious DAW users. So hopefully what we're gonna see here as this roadmap, as we get to the roadmap, we'll see some fun stuff down there, uh, but I am gonna take a second just to hydrate with this stock music musician brand water bottle. Mmm. Oh, my throat is so, so refreshed. Here they're saying this is the monthly Reason users over the last few years. Who knows what this means? Who knows what the baseline is? Who knows what they're measuring? Who knows how many of these are people using the promotional uh, discounts with Reason Plus, free seven day trial, 333 deal, whatever it is. Um, in any event, I think you can see an upward trend, which is great. Um, more users should mean more investment, and more investment should mean more updates, hopefully. And also the smoother cash flow of Reason 12 will hopefully mean that we can actually start working more on this roadmap style development. This here is, I think, a really key line here and something that I stressed in the review, these parts right here, is that the updates that have been made recently to Reason, Reason, both Reason 10, Reason 11, and Reason 12 have been a lot of deep work updating the graphics engine, which basically they say touches every part of Reason and is the oldest part of the code uh, or one of the oldest parts. So it was really hard to do. I totally believe that. Adding VST support, I'm sure, was a very difficult thing to do. 
converting reason into a plugin, I'm sure, was a very difficult thing to do. And sort of optimizing reason, like they did in Reason 10 and Reason 11, I'm sure, was a very difficult thing to do. Updating the browser, also, from a core level, I'm sure, was very difficult. My hope is that now that there's all this deep work done, sort of, we can now see, even though this is Reason 12, it's really, hopefully, something more like Reason 2.0, a fresh start where we've got the foundations for reason to grow over the next decade. Probably a pandemic doesn't make any of this easier either. Although I guess Sweden just sort of said, hey, <laughs> we're gonna ignore it. You know, they, they recognize there's room for improvement on how it handles zooming. Um, but they say, hey, we recognize it. We're gonna hopefully gonna work on it. So cool. It's great to see this growth in reason users. It's great to see a understanding that core level work has been improved. And so now let's actually look at this roadmap. The first thing I want, they want to stress, but I also want to stress this. To me, transparency is more important than the specific features they're laying out here. And this as a roadmap versus a firm commitment. I personally am fine with this. Understanding these things are going to be complicated and take time. Uh, these are their rough goals for what they're going to achieve between now and January. Things might slip. I'm fine with that, you know, within reason, uh, within reasonable time frames, things take time. Um, so the first thing we're going to see in October, apparently, is a smart browser. I'm stoked on this. This is the main thing I was saying was that the browser as released was underwhelming fast, but didn't do much. They're saying they're going to leave, give a, a fresh and fast browsing experience. And hopefully that will allow you to organize your content in a way that makes finding patches and sounds even easier. Really hoping that means a tag-based browser with ratings, uh, BPM, other useful stuff like that. Key detection um, would be awesome. Um, next, they also say that in October, we're going to be getting the full high-res reskin of Reason. If you haven't noticed, uh, the launch of Reason did not include everything in HD. Most things were high-res, but the transport wasn't. Uh, some of the sequencer controls don't seem to be um that sort of thing so that'll be a big deal they're also in november promising more styles for the combinator too so essentially what they're saying is that um you know I, it sounds like it's gonna be more buttons more sliders more of that i don't know if we'll get things like advanced controls like x y pads i would really hope to do that to see that we see that in a few of the other reason devices my goal would be for the combinator too is that basically any anything that reason studios has created basically could be put on there any type of knob any type of pad any type of um slider all of that you could control via the combinator interface and add to the combinator i think it'll sound really cool i think it'll inspire even more creativity in december they say that M1 support will be coming to Reason. Uh, that means that all of you that are running it on a Mac, a new Mac, will be able to probably, it'll probably breeze through based on everything I'm hearing about how native M1 stuff works. For what it's worth, I'm on an Intel Mac and it works great. And January, yes, VST3 support is coming. VST3 support has been confirmed. They say it's a big project, which I truly believe. Um, well, it's taking longer than the other stuff, but they're saying it's coming. It is confirmed. Uh, so for some of you, that might mean, all right, well, now let's just get Reason 12 now and we'll wait till VST3 support comes. Others of you might want to try a wait and see approach. Um, I would probably get Reason 12 now, now that it's confirmed. Why not enjoy Mimic, the Combinator, and high-res graphics? Um, and if you're in that boat, I have an affiliate link to download re or to buy Reason 12 or upgrade Reason 12 and help support the channel. What they say is Reason 12 subscribers will get these as part of their subscription, and the plan is to deliver them as free point upgrades to Reason 12 owners too. So regardless of whether you're using Reason Plus or Reason, all of these updates will make it to your device, to your software. Here's a little map. Um, these are the things that are under development. They distinguish between under development and under investigation. Basically, they're committing to the under development stuff, just maybe not the timeline is how I interpret it. And the under development stuff are things that they're 
prioritizing for their next bet part of the process. So what is under investigation? First, new devices. They're trying to figure out what they should do next. They have a lot of ideas, but they are ex uh, excited to solicit, you know, um, ideas on what might be new, what might be cool. That's awesome. Uh, so, you know, start brainstorming. Uh, maybe we can do a video where we talk about what would be cool to have in Reason as a new device. Next, they say tight integration with other DAWs. So here we first see that about half the people, half of users are using Reason and another DAW, and they want this to be as smooth as possible. So they're looking to support more VST features and decrease startup time as the first two things they're going to do. Third, they're saying immediate musical results. Uh, noting that Reason can take on many results, they believe that strength is getting ideas going quickly, so they are investigating improvements to current workflow, sequencer, and more. This, I think, is the biggest thing that they're hearing from the community. I want to reemphasize that this is a massive priority for the half of Reason users that are using it as a DAW. I think that they would benefit massively from these attempts, and it might bring more people back from the DA back from the plugin to the DAW. Finally, they're also figuring out an authorization or offline mode for Reason Plus, um, because people are depending on Reason when there's not always internet access. Um, so hopefully they'll get a, figure out a way to do that. Um, so that, and I love this metaphor here, they can hit two drums with one stick. Great metaphor. Um, I think I'm gonna start using that. So that's outline and investigation that Reason Studios has promoted. I think this is a fair outline. Um, especially because I would think deeper things like immediate musical results is probably a Reason 13 update. Basically, what I would expect for Reason 13 is a redoing of the workflow and the sequencer. Uh, that would be my definition of a win for Reason 13. I think everything that they've committed to doing for Reason 12 is totally reasonable, and the timeline seems fair. I'm excited about this more than anything, though. I'm excited about the roadmap. So those are my thoughts. Please let me know what you think about this roadmap. What else you think Reason Studios could do to be more transparent down in the comments. One of the best companies I've seen in soliciting feedback from their members is uh, Kajabi. They're my web host slash they do a bunch of like email and all of that for me. And when they're looking to do new features, they actually regularly survey their audience about what their audience's priorities are, what um, would make features work well, what people care about more, what people care about less. Um, like questions like, if you were to have this feature, would you prefer it under this tab or under this tab? I, I think there's a lot to be said for democratizing development, and I would love to see it if Reason could start including some of that in their development, especially as they move towards a subscription model. I think everybody benefits from that.